Hi there, Eric here, and today we're going to be looking at a, another augmented reality platform, and this one is going to be called Blipper. It's fairly new, it's relatively new as far as some of the other big names in AR, but it's growing very fast. It's based in London, headquartered in London. They have regional offices in Amsterdam, San Francisco, and they have now one here in Japan and Tokyo. <clears throat> Looks like they launched in 2011. And uh, they are pretty much looking like they are geared mostly toward print media and marketing. And this seems to be where most of the money is as far as clients go for augmented reality content. But what I'm most interested in, what I'd like to show you today, is some of the usability. How easy is it to make and create AR environments using this platform? How much will it cost you? Can it be used in, in tourism, education, and things like that? And how good is the app and the tracking? We're going to take a look at all that. I've been only using this for about mm, two weeks. So first I'd like to show you that you, you can't really, they use something called the Blip Builder. Then this is how you build your augmented reality triggers and overlays. They call them blips, just like Arasama calls them auras. Uh, whatever you have the app look at and sense and put, a, put in your digital information, those are called blips. So you, they want to blip the world, I guess, is their uh, marketing campaign. So if you want access to the Blip Builder, which is a, uh, a web-based uh, tool to create these AR environments, you'll need to contact someone in their sales department first. I was able to get a trial version, been using it for about a week. After you log in, this is what your dashboard will look like. And I created a simple... Uh, AR environment using my business card. It took me about mm, an hour or so to build this particular environment. Um, as far as some of the other environments, it's very similar. Uh, if you're familiar with the old Matayo Creator platform that was on the PC, it's similar to that. If you notice here, I've just this is my AR environment. I'm going to just move around a little bit here. I've put in some assets of, just so we can see how it tracks in all of these. I put in a video, a semi-transparent image, and a couple of other uh, images with transparent things around them. <clears throat> so we want to know how this tracks and how it looks in. So first you put in your assets. You can list them as a list or uh, you see them as thumbnails which is pretty good as far as that goes. Getting around the uh, the UI is pretty easy. You can go full screen here and you move around. And it also has the function so you can look in 3D environments. So this bottom here, I put this in as an asset is my business card. And then I uploaded these assets here so we can uh, see what it like what it's like in a virtual sense. So you can even preview some of this stuff. And also they have a animation panel where you can do some very simple animations, spin, grow, pan, move, left, right. And I tried a little bit of it. And there's a preview of it maybe here. Yeah. <laughs> Just to see what that might look like. <clears throat> but what a lot of these uh, applications have trouble with is rendering it in 3D time and with video in the background being able to manipulate that and actually show it in the background and back of transparency. And that. It's a very difficult thing for a lot of these apps to do. I'm going to demo that in a second. So after you put your assets in and I had to align them you know, vertically, I move them around using these position trackers. You can move them around physically as well. You can move them, come in and move them around like this. But I use the actual position markers to get them just right. And then I added some animations, some simple ones, just to see how that looks. And then you, you can test it. You can port it out. You give your own 
sort of like a channel, let's see. You, know, you download your Blipper app. I'll load that up for you right now just to see, show you what that looks like. Here's the Blipper app on my Galaxy Note Edge. And the it looks a bit like a scanning process is always happening. So the thing about this platform is everything is in the cloud. Nothing's downloaded directly onto your phone. So anything that you're scanning is going to take a few seconds at least for just staring at that object to see, to transmit that data up to their cloud servers so it can run the algorithm to see if that is an image worth that's close to being recognized. And therefore, they can da start downloading the assets on top of it. It's very Wi-Fi intensive. It's very graphical C GPU intensive. And uh, if you don't have Wi-Fi, or if you have slow Wi-Fi, if you have data issues, you might have some issues there. But <clears throat> let's see if I might be able to do juxtaposition myself to get this going in a way where we can see what that might look like if I scan my business card. Let's see if that scans right in. So I'm going to give it a second to scan. Oh, that, that's going. I'm going to pull back a little bit here and see how that tracks. You'll notice the video, if that's still seeing it, it's not going too well as far as the transparency. Not too great on the tracking. I'm going to move that around a little bit and go out. See how that's still going there? Now, am I using it completely correctly? I'm not sure. Can it track better? Most definitely. But if I had to go back and rate a bunch of these things so far in just my two weeks of using it, the UI is good. Their tracking is decent. Uh, the services, as far as being able to upload them and meaning to be able to, to use them on your phone without any extra SDKs and things like that, very good. Um, the ability to port out your own apps, port, make your own, for example, test on a Windows machine or port out your own executables for laptops, for Windows phones, for uh, tablets. Can't do any of that. Uh, it's all on the cloud. So if you want, you're reporting these out in places where you want direct and immediate recognition of your uh, AR content, you can't do it. Uh, so there are great things about it, there are good things about it, and there are definite, definite limitations as well. Uh, as far as my usage, if I were to try to use this right now as far as uh, education, I would use it mainly for student projects depending on the price, when, which I'm not quite sure right now. So. This would be great for student projects if you could use this Blipper, Blip Builder for your own projects and port them out into their cloud service where everyone can see them. If that were free, I would say this is a definite use for project-based AR in the classroom. If it is not, well, it depends on the prices and I'll have to get back to you on those because I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I'm still... Uh, figuring out what it's worth to me before I go and try and figure out uh, how much I'm willing to pay for it. So again, this is the Blip Builder app. I'm Eric, and uh, if you're working with some AR products, won't you uh, subscribe or send me some emails or something like that? You can find me at erichawkinson.com as well. We'll see you around.